Sculpting a dragon was a challenge, but my client requested that I make a cake with a dragon on it for her mother's birthday. She said she wanted to look like either a Chinese style dragon or a Game of Thrones style dragon. And as a huge fan of Game of Thrones, I had to go with the Game of Thrones style dragon. I decided to create a gold motherly dragon sitting on top of the cake with her three eggs inside a geode cake representing the family, the father, and the two daughters. And it turns out that the mother also loves crystals, geodes, stones. So this was the perfect combination for this cake. My name's Melissa and I'm an artist. I create cakes, sculptures, and a lot of other cool things. Today, I'm going to be sculpting a gold dragon cake topper. And in next week's video, I'm going to be making the geo cake that the mother sits on top of. Let's get right to it and make this cake. I start with creating the armature for the dragon's body. And since it's going to be sitting on top of a six and eight inch cake, I have both of those tiers in styrofoam to work on as I go. So that way when it's time to transfer it, it'll be the exact right proportions to fit on top of the real cake. I have one wire going from the head to the tail as the main support of the body. And then I build up the shape and all of that meat on the dragon with some tin foil. Again, this is a cake topper, so there's no cake in it, but it will be sitting right on top of the cake in the end. And the beauty of this is that you can save it forever because it won't go bad. It's just gonna be covered in modeling chocolate. You can actually take this cake topper off of the cake and save it as a souvenir in your house forever to look at and admire because it'll never go bad since it's just covered in modeling chocolate. I knew I was going for that Game of Thrones style dragon. I chose not to give it any wings because the wings really cover up the whole body and I'm going to be sculpting all of this beautiful detail and I just felt they weren't a necessity here. So we'll say she put her wings aside for when she wants to fly. They could come on and off. <laughs> She's a modern day AI robot dragon. <laughs> I do a layer of modeling chocolate all over the body just to plan out all of my proportions for the head, the neck, the legs, the tail. And then I go in with more detail. The Game of Thrones style dragon is very harsh, very intense, kind of scary. And I wanted her to have a softer look. She's tough and strong, but she's a mother. She's a protective and she loves. So I wanted to make sure to create those features that don't make her look necessarily scary, more regal and beautiful. And I have to say, sculpting a dragon was a challenge. I gathered different photos from online that I like to use at reference and then kind of pieced them together and made up as I went along how exactly I wanted her to look. It's always really important to get those eyes in proportion first, the eyes and then the snout for the nose. And that's going to set the base for the rest of the face. But if those eyes are out of proportion, she's gonna look off. From each angle, they need to be exactly the same. Otherwise, she'll look lopsided and googly-eyed. And we do not want that for our beautiful golden mother dragon. Her face is serious as it gazes out in a protective and loving way. Because all creatures love their babies. And I wanted to show that with this dragon. She has some very long spiky horns coming out from the top of her head. They get really, really tall in the front and then they get smaller and taper. And then all along the spine, I'm gonna have overlapping spikes right from her neck all the way to her tail. And that guides me as I go to make each side proportional because if I know where the center spine is, I can see how even each side looks. The sides of her neck, I give a nice overlapping scaly texture with lines. The center of her neck is going to have these long overlapping wide scales and then these little spiky scales centered around each side, which again is giving it a lot of dimension and different textures to make her beautiful to look at. I don't wanna give her just one type of scales going all over her body. I want it to look different, different textures, different sizes, different directions, and that's going to make her look multi-dimensional and feel real. Mama Dragon is in a seated, rested position as she sits on top of her cave and looks out for any danger protecting her eggs. So her feet are bent and just hanging on the sides in a very rested way, but also in that way that she can kind of just jump up and grab her wings and fly whenever she needs. My biggest worry with this cake was that my dragon was gonna look too generic and not unique and beautiful enough. So I really took the time to figure out how I can make her look original and with my own style while still adhering to the typical dragon representation. Once the scales are done, I continue those overlapping spikes all the way down to the bottom of the tail. And the spikes really tie the whole piece together. It draws your eye from the top to the bottom of the tail and gives her that 
dimension that I want. And once my beautiful mama is sculpted, it's time to paint her. All gold. As an artist, I'm always thinking about how I can give this more depth with whatever I'm doing. So I mixed a little bit of silver into some of the gold to make it lighter, and then other parts of the gold I left deeper and more gold. <laughs> her body is this lighter base tone of gold, and then the spikes along the spine around the sides of the neck, and her eyes and horns are all a darker gold. This creates a separation and also elevates those moments that I want to pop out. It's all about creating that depth and dimension. Lastly, it was time to transfer her onto the cake. Again, you can see me create the Geo cake in my next video coming next week. Because she's a little heavy with that chocolate on top, I added some structural supports into the cake with some bubble tea straws, and I place her right on top and give her her final resting home. When I transfer the dragon to the top of the cake, there can be a few little smudges, so I go in and do my final touch-ups. A few of her nails fell off, so I had to go ahead and just replace those because they're so thin and tiny. And in the end, my vision came to life of this beautiful mother dragon, very regal, very strong looking, fierce, but still soft. Taking that time to plan her out in the beginning allowed me to have that vision that I wanted and complete for the cake. I loved her so much as a white dragon and as a gold dragon as well. Sometimes it's a struggle when I sculpt something and I love how it looks in just the plain white base. I don't even want to paint it. But then once I paint it, I'm always happy in the end as well. <laughs> I was proud of myself because I did have a little fear going into sculpting the dragon just because they're such a complicated, mystical looking creature. And I was proud of myself that I was able to create my own style and look for my mother dragon, which I could not do without my reference photos and inspiration that I was there already. But I still felt like it was my own and didn't look like any dragon that I'd seen before. So I was really happy. If you enjoyed watching me sculpt this golden mother dragon, please give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe for so many more cool videos to come. So excited to show you what I've been creating. If you'd like to see the process of me sculpting this dragon start to finish, no edits, no cuts, check it out on my Patreon linked below. Your support would mean everything. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you learned a lot about sculpting a dragon out of chocolate. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video.